Hello everyone, how are you going? And welcome to Canada ranked best country in the world for 2021. Now it's not a complete surprise because we know that they're a lucky bunch, but let's just see how they're beating the rest of the world. That's right, Canada has won top spot in this year's ranking conducted by US News and World Report. Fair enough. Canada fell behind Switzerland for the past three years oh. and had a second place ranking in 2020. But ask us Canadians and we would already tell you we're number one without needing any ranking analysis. Of course. I mean, a lot of countries are probably going to say that they're number one. I'm sure if you ask the USA, for example, they're going to say they're number one, depending on who you ask. Australia is going to be the same thing. UK, Japan, whatever it may be. I mean, of course, I'm now wondering who is going to win it for 2022, considering she said Switzerland beat them and they've always been up there. And so maybe they've continued. But mm, I don't know. I feel like no one really ever remains up there for too long, unless you're Iceland and the World Peace Index, I think it was. Either way, when you get to look at something like this in your backyard, you're certainly going to be a pretty lucky bunch. The 2021 Best Countries Analysis was determined by a survey of more than 17,000 business and college educated individuals wow. that are nationally representative of their country. Data wow. and storytelling explored how countries compare on different global issues like corruption and racial equality. 79 countries were evaluated by using 76 different metrics to appropriately rank them. That's a lot. I'm sure after a while you're going, oh yeah, we've got a clear winner here, but to go from 17,000 professional individuals over 76 countries or 74 countries and 76 metrics, all of those variables are going to add up so quickly. But at the same time, I guess, like I said, you're going to have a clear winner because you've got so much data to deal with. But that's certainly not a bad thing because I can only imagine a statistician's dream is to just have unlimited data for all the graphs and sheets that they can create. And so at least from a sheer numbers perspective, it's going to be highly accurate data. A few new metrics were added to this year's report, including commitment to social justice and climate goals, yeah. adaptability and racial equality, and Canada excelled in these areas. Canada is also perceived as having a good job market, caring about human rights, and is committed to social justice. Additionally, the country finished number one in being viewed as not corrupt and respecting property rights, says the report. Wow, number one. To be able to finish in the number one spot is definitely an achievement to be proud of because, well, I guess someone has to be number one, but there is so much competition in that. But to be honest, it kind of took me by surprise that these things that she just listed, like climate change and racial issues, are only just being added in 2021. Wow, are you serious? I would have thought they would have been added from a survey like this 10, 15, 20 years ago. And of course, you don't have to come number one in every single one of these metrics. You just have to do really well. And I guess most Western countries are going to do all right, but it's interesting that Canada just excels clearly above the rest. 10 sub-rankings made up the overall rankings for each country, which are adventure, agility, what? cultural influence, entrepreneurship, heritage, movers, Movies. open for business, power, quality of life, and social purpose. What? Wait, 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 wait. I don't know what the Star Wars theme that's going on here at the moment is, but two, four, six, eight, ten. Yes, okay, at least I've actually done that. But to list all of those things, I certainly hope that she breaks them down a little bit more because to list agility as an attribute of a country, I don't fully understand how that works. I mean, I can understand power. There's many meanings of that. And quality of life is a very simple thing to kind of perceive, maybe not so much to measure. But to have things like adventure, agility, and movers in there, for goodness sake. Man, I'm certainly confused about those few. Canada takes up about two-fifths of the North American continent, making it the second largest country in the world after Russia. Yeah. It's sparsely populated, with most of its residents living within 125 miles of its border with the United States. Canada's expansive wilderness to the north plays a large role in Canadian identity. Mm. as does the country's reputation of welcoming immigrants. And also just being so cold as you go more and more north. Let's say you go all the way up to Alert. At least that makes sense as to why it's going to be a little bit chilly. And even though Canadians love to say that, oh, hang on a second, it isn't always cold. It does get up to the mid-30s, sometimes 40s, which is insane, like I've said, with an 80 degree temperature range. But either way, you cannot dispute the fact that Canada is a cold place in comparison to, let's say, Dubai. Clearly, completely different climates. But there is definitely a reason that Canadians in Canada is just so closely tied to ice hockey and winter sports in general. And I just quickly want to touch on the fact that most people live next to the USA border because obviously Australia, everyone basically lives on the coastline. And I guess for Canada, you don't always want to live on the coastline, especially not up north, like I said. So I would like to know how much does it actually have to do with being close to the USA and how much is it to do with just a slightly more temperate climate? The country was a collection of British colonies, but it became a self-governing dominion in 1867. 
Canadians pride themselves in encouraging all of their citizens to honour their own cultures. In 1971, Canada adopted a national policy of multiculturalism, which celebrates this country's diversity. At the same time, Canada faces national challenges related to the concerns of Indigenous peoples and those in the predominantly French-speaking province of Quebec. Now, she mentioned a point there that is constantly brought up about Canada, and it's not a bad thing per se, it's just the fact that, well, it's been described previously as a mosaic, but she just said it in a way that is understandable, but also not an abstract way. She said everyone is encouraged to be themselves in their own cultures instead of trying to melt like the USA, a melting pot. And so that allows your country so much freedom in terms of, yes, your neighbour can be Asian or African, European, whatever it may be, and they can continue to practice and preserve their cultural remnants and heritage, but at the same time, I guess, like, why assimilate into another country's culture as a whole. And of course, once again, it's not saying that Canada is flawless or any country for that matter is going to be flawless. Every single country is hopefully trying to work on any problems, whether it be with race, religion or anything else. And that's just all about forethought and looking into the future and also looking at the past going, hang on a second, well, clearly we made a whole bundle of mistakes here to put it nicely. Let's just make sure that none of that happens again because we've moved on from that. And so even though that metric has nothing to do with it, let's say economic stability or facilities and resources belonging to the country at the same time, I feel as though if you tick that box, you're doing pretty well then you should certainly be up the list if not number one. While constitutional guarantees allow the province wide-ranging cultural and linguistic autonomy, movements right. for complete independence comes in waves. Technically, Canada is a constitutional monarchy with Queen Elizabeth as head of state. Yeah, the Queen is represented locally by a largely ceremonial Governor General appointed by the Canadian Prime Minister, and the government follows the British style of parliamentary democracy. I mean, it's certainly true, but honestly, I was just getting lost in some of these images and videos that I'm seeing here. Look at that. I mean, you cannot dispute that it's cold. But in terms of what she was talking about in relation to Quebec, I really don't know much about how that entire system works because I've heard so many different things about it in terms of, oh yeah, they're kind of different, they're kind of independent, they're kind of this, they're kind of that. I mean, of course, on the whole, they are included as part of Canada. And I did know previously before I knew anything really that they were part of the British monarchy system. But having that French history there, even though it sounds as though it's caused some problems in the past, and it's still getting worked through now just really mixes it up in comparison to other Western countries. Canada is a high-tech industrial society with a high standard of living. Hmm. Trade agreements in the 1980s and 1990s dramatically bolstered trade with the United States yeah. and now the two countries are each other's largest trading partners. That's one way to do it. While the service sector is Canada's biggest economic driver, the country is a significant exporter of energy, food and minerals. Canada energy. ranks third in the world in proven oil reserves and is the world's fourth largest oil producer. Wow. I mean, I guess I did know that Canada exports a lot of fuel and oil to the USA, but I didn't know that they also exported energy, like being over electricity lines. But as I was saying, that is certainly a very easy and very efficient way to bolster your entire economy and just boost your country in general. Just to kind of tag along to the USA and, and become a major trading partner, if not the biggest trading partner, it is definitely an easy one-way ticket just to a little bit more money coming in the door. And when you have the land and the resources to back it up, like she said, the fourth biggest oil reserves and then the third biggest exporter in the world. No, the other way around. Third biggest reserves and the fourth biggest producer in the world that is a massive 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 just not blow bolstering to the economy and obviously the usa is the world's biggest economy followed by china and then a smattering of others like germany and japan but it is countries like canada and australia that are just so lucky to be so resource rich because it literally makes you rich you hit the gold mine so to say and so especially when you're paired like i said right next to canada and you can just immediately ship it all next door you are definitely going to have a decent economy that then you can funnel the money or at least when you funnel the money into the right spots that then allows you to be easily number one Canada is a member of the United Nations, through which it has participated in many peacekeeping missions, right. and we consider ourselves peacekeepers. Mm -hmm. It is also a member of NATO and the Commonwealth of Nations. Look at that. Whoa, what is that? Obviously, she just talked about this, but I'm more interested in how is that being kept in such amazing shape? Because that looks very, very old. But look at it. It hasn't been blown apart for one. But it is just so immaculate. Look at that. All the stonework is so clean. It's not like there's anything crumbling down. It's been obviously maintained. And considering if someone asked me where that is, I would definitely say, oh, somewhere in the UK. It definitely shows its age. But hey, I guess that certainly makes sense. Let's say similar to Switzerland, when you are more of a peaceful, more of a neutral zone, you are not as much of a target. And that can literally keep you out of the firing line when it comes to wars over this kind of history. So congratulations Canada on ranking as the number one country in the world.
Fair enough. Like I said, someone has to be it. And hey, if you tick all the boxes, it certainly makes sense. Obviously, usually it's the Nordic countries that generally tick all the boxes or tick all the right boxes. And like I said, it will be interesting to see who can just grab it back or maybe Canada can even hold on to it for 2022 as well. But clearly, there are so many different reasons as to why Canada was deserving of it. I never really found out why agility and movers and things are there. But hey, I guess that's, well, you've ticked that box. And so there really isn't much I can argue against. Clearly, 17,000 people came together and just showcased why Canada is going to be the best country for the year. I'm sure every country is pretty darn good that is making it anywhere near the top of the list. But like I said, when you get to walk out your back door and see beautiful Banff for all these different national park sites like this, there really isn't much competition. And so it really is pretty plain and simple. If you were just better than every other country at doing what most countries or all countries should be doing, then of course you're going to get number one. And hey, I reckon it's pretty deserved in this case. But anyway, in saying that, I reckon I'm going to call it there. So thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, feel free to do the YouTube algorithmic things down below. Also, if this is the first video of mine that you are watching, then make sure to go check out any other ones I've done. Also, make sure to go check out the original video down in the description below. Or hey, maybe even just want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss another one of these in the future. But all in all, have a good one and see ya.